Froggy, and this is my Top 10, where we share with you our opinion on all things in the Dollyverse. And today, we are going to be talking about our Top 10 Dolls We Want Back. Over the years, I have seen so many doll lines that I have loved! And now, I can't find them anymore! Ah! There are some dolls that I missed out on and never got a chance to start a collection! And that's what happened with our number 10 pick, Winx. I had to borrow this doll from my mother. Winx are 12-inch dolls that had an animated series. It was about magic, they had wings, they had several different characters with a wide variety of dolls to choose from. This one has articulation at the head, shoulder, hip, and knee. So that's pretty decent. I love when dolls have TV shows because it just makes it that much more fun. Unfortunately, by the time I discovered Winx Club on Netflix, the dolls were already difficult to find. Aw, man! Number 9. La -di da I did not snooze on this doll line. I have pretty much the entire collection. From the signature dolls, to costumes, and these little sweeties. All of the dolls had the same articulation, which is awesome! We often see doll lines come out with a signature doll that is fully articulated, then later they come out with an economy doll that has less articulation. Which can be kind of… eh. But the quality of this line, I think, stayed pretty consistent. With fabulous hair colors and makeup, exciting themes, and detailed clothing and accessories. They can move at the head, shoulder, hip, and knee. Their packaging was so cute! With lots of details and backstories about the dolls. And they had a pet that came out with different looks and accessories. Doll hunting for this line was a lot of fun. Number 8. City Girls from Toner Dolls Toner dolls can be very expensive, like this Deja Vu doll. So when they launched a line of pocket-friendly dolls, I jumped on it. They still had a lot of the qualities that we love about toner dolls. Like articulation, we have movement at the head, shoulder, upper torso, elbow, wrist, hip, and knee, beautiful eyes, and detailed accessories. The City Girl line had a casual look. I love casual clothes! But they knew how to dress up when the occasion called for it. This was definitely a fun line, and I was a little disappointed that I couldn't find more. Number 7. Disney Happy Places This is a combination of Shopkins Happy Places and Disney. There was a whole bunch of different Disney themes from Minnie Mouse, to Cinderella. There were so many adorable Disney accessories without faces on it. What's wrong with my face? Oh, don't get me wrong. There is nothing wrong with faces on Shopkins. I just really loved these accessories because there was no guilt about feeding your dolls fruit. Uh-oh, I'm out of here. And come on, these are really cute accessories. There are still a lot that I don't have. Since we're here, let's open this right quick. Hopefully we'll get something new. I'm thinking this is from the Rapunzel collection. Yes, it's Maximus. He's a little plushy. And we got paint and a craft box. We could easily put these in other dollhouses. Love these. Number six, 12 inch brats. That's right, I loved the 12-inch Bratz. When Bratz first came out, I was torn. The doll collector side of me was like, cool, but the mom side of me was like, eh. Then a while later, they launched the 12-inch Bratz with new fashion that made my mom's side very happy. And their faces were still pretty much the same. At this size, they looked a little more proportionate, and they meshed well with the rest of our dolls and our accessories. I love all of the little details on their clothes. That is a buckle on her belt. Cool! They had decent articulation with movement at the head, shoulder, elbow, wrist, 
hip and a bend and snap knee. They still had those snap off feet. But yeah, they were my favorite brats. I also liked the 2015 brats. They had softer makeup, fun themes, and a really cute claymation show. However, that line, like my other favorites, the 12 inch dolls, didn't last long. Come on, I'm not the only one out here that love these, right? Number five, Makey's. A 3D printed doll that you design online. That's right, you get to customize the doll. The hair color, eyebrows, shape of the eyes, shape of the nose, shape of the mouth, shape of the face. Little Froggy and I had a ton of fun designing these two girls. They are fully articulated. Can pivot at the neck, rotate at the shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, and ankle. They wear wigs so you can switch them out so you can continue customizing even after they've been delivered to your home. Making these a great doll for the creative collector. Which is why I was heartbroken when I went back to buy another one and they were gone! <laughs> no! At the time, 3D printed dolls was a new idea and I would love to see this return. Number 4. Moxie Teens These were absolutely beautiful dolls! With inset acrylic eyes, long eyelashes, super detailed fashion, full articulation, what's not to love? These are large dolls standing around 14 inches tall. Some of them had wigs, which were sometimes difficult to keep on, but they came out with rooted ones that were my favorite. I remember walking around Toys R Us searching for Moxie teens. There were also Moxie girls, which were a lot smaller. They're about 10 inches. All made by MGA, the same company that makes LOL Surprise. The Moxie teens have so much detail. Real denim jackets with buttons, ruffle lace tops, faux suede belts with studs, faux fur vest. So impressive, these so need to come back. Number three, Ever After High. The children of our favorite storybook characters, all thrown together in high school. They had an animated series where you got to know all of the characters. There were a lot of characters with fun themes. The packaging was amazing with details about the characters on the back. Play sets reinforcing the storybook theme on Netflix. In the beginning, they were all fully articulated with detailed clothing that can be removed and personalized accessories. You could tell a lot of work went into this line. It was fun and magical. I was not ready for it to disappear from the shelves. But I am very hopeful that we have not seen the last of Ever After High. This story may have another chapter. Number two, Live Dolls. Real girls, real life. These dolls are what made me really start to appreciate and search for articulated dolls. Because of those knees. Sorry, her hair is a mess. But they have articulation at the head, shoulder, elbow, wrist, waist, hip, knee, two nice little joints there, and the ankle. They had acrylic inset eyes and wigs. Not a huge fan of wigs. And there you go, see? But she had a really cute little pixie cut underneath. When I discovered Liv, we were doing the Darby show using Barbie fashionistas. Back then, Barbie fashionistas had pretty decent articulation, but I wanted those knees. So we started doing doll head transplants. Yep, that was the beginning. They had great accessories and play sets in realistic colors. Every year at Toy Fair, I am hoping to see Liv again, so who knows? Maybe next year. And the number one toy that we want back now is Monster High! Yeah! 
the children of famous monsters all in high school, working together and accepting each other's differences. I love Monster High because of their message. Be yourself, be unique, be a monster. It was all about accepting yourself, flaws and all. Different monsters with different backgrounds coming together. They had a YouTube series, which I loved. I believe I watched every episode of the original Monster Highs. There were movies with dolls to match. Their packaging was always quite impressive. Just like their fashion. When they first came out, the details were amazing. We have faux buttons, silver stitching, lace, jackets with faux fur collars, shoes with painted details. Seriously, the details are amazing. That is a little statue as her heel. And of course, they were fully articulated. With a great range of motion, they could touch their head and hold a cell phone, place their hands on their hips, and sit in a chair with their legs off to the side. They had unique face sculpts, backstories. These dolls were a lot of fun. Searching for the latest Monster High doll was pretty much a sport. There were play sets and accessories and dolls that actually float. Come on, Monster High was totally cool. Then it went through a reboot, which wasn't so bad. I mean, the dolls are still cute. They were just different. I wasn't really crazy about the hairy arm thing or the increased number of dolls with reduced articulation. But now I don't see any Monster Highs on the shelves at all, so I kind of feel bad about complaining. Because we did get some pretty cool accessories from the reboot. I loved these lockers. And I would love to see the original Monster High in stores again. So that is my top 10 dolls we want back now. I wouldn't mind seeing new Lala Loopsie Girls, Cuckoo Harajuku, and Project MC Squared dolls either. I am seeing less and less of these dolls on the shelves as well, and I'm just hoping that they're working on something big to release soon. We've seen a lot of dolls come and go over the years, like Pinky Cooper, the Jet Set Pets, and my mini Mixie Qs, and it's always our hope that some of our favorites will return. Brats have had like two comebacks. Don't even get me started on Littlest Pet Shop. Thank you for joining us for this top 10. Let us know what your top 10 are in the comments down below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog and we will see you next time for another top 10 and we, and we, and we gotta do something get it right